Good evening. Uh, before I jump in, I want to say two things. One, I want to thank Jim and Joe for, uh, especially in an election year where all conversations seem to be bifurcated, for creating a forum of having truly nonpartisan access into the conversation of healthcare. I think it's really, really important, and I appreciate that. Two, um, the doctor from WebMD. Um, McDreamy dies? <laughs> Spoiler alert, I'm on season two. I gotta switch over to Scandal, man. Uh, the first year of the Patient Safety Summit, Joe invited me to speak so that I could share my experience in hospitals while preparing to shoot my movie, Puncture, a film that my brother and I directed starring Chris Evans about how the GPOs banded together with medical device manufacturers to squash the invention of the first spring action needle. In that speech, I included the parallel experience I had while making that film with my father, a pharmacist, getting cancer and eventually passing away. I drew a very long analogy between working on a film set and the working of a hospital. It's on the website if you'd like to check it out. I took that approach because at that time, it seemed to be the only relevance that I had to the beginning of what this organization was doing. Now, four years later into this movement, I've gotten to see firsthand the many different sides and perspectives that meet together with varied but increasing success to the managing of the care of people in need. So to me, four years later, this analogy grows and the parallels continue. With this movement over the past four years, I have traveled to Washington, met various healthcare professionals, and I've even had a bit of medical care of my own. This past year, I had a, uh, a blood clot that turned into a pulmonary embolism. And I want to tell you that although people say that ignorance is bliss, the information that I gained through this organization actually brought me great comfort because rather than worried about my own seemingly bad situation, I just watched people to make sure they were washing their hands and having really good information in their patient handoffs. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it was common. It was very common. So now as I continue to grow in my field and I learn more about yours, I am constantly reminded about what these two industries actually have in common and the common element that always needs perfecting. Communication. Communication of the mechanism of our work and communication about the mission we are fighting for with our work. So this is what I thought I'd spend a few minutes talking to you about tonight. There's this saying that talking about art is like dancing about architecture. How does one communicate something seemingly abstract and obtuse in a way that's tangible and personal? As a storyteller, the real trick of my profession is to use these tools to communicate the abstract concretely in a way that resonates to others deeply and personally, hopefully to the point where it lives beyond a single moment in time that's experienced in the theater. In the world of entertainment, we are often tasked with taking on a subject that we feel passionate about, hopefully, and while it may seem obvious to us what we're trying to say and why people should pay attention to it, we need to find a way to break it down and to acknowledge the specific realities around what we are doing to communicate that message. I can get Al Pacino to come up here and read you facts and statistics about how the tobacco industry colluded to hide dangerous information so they could further the sales of their product. But it would only have a momentary impact if those facts can't be couched in a way that allows to see us ourselves inside that story and therefore empathize with the fellow men and women in that story, like was done in the movie The Insider. I could ask Chris Evans to get up here and give you a talk about needle safety and the dangers of GPOs squashing a better product's chance of finding a place in the market due to greed, but his words would be gone in a flicker unless we found a way through empathetic storytelling for you to see its relevance not just to your life as medical professionals, but to you as an everyday person on this planet. You must at least see yourself in some small way in that story as was done in the movie Puncture. It's why those two men are such good actors and why those two films did such a good job of bringing those issues to light. My brother and I directed and produced Puncture so I could be a little not objective on that one. <laughs> In two movies that came out recently, Spotlight and Concussion, the stories of cover-ups by Catholic priests over sexual abuse and the football community over medical data that could save lives is incredible. But it's our connection to the human journey of the protagonists in those films that give those stories a chance to have a lasting impact for the issues that they aim to bring to light. Now, it might seem obvious to you now that someone would want to make these award-nominated films with these very famous actors in them, but I promise you, you just do a little bit of research 
And you will find it was a very long, complicated, and arduous journey for those filmmakers to get someone to take notice and give them a shot at bringing those important stories to light. So what was the magic ingredient that allowed their perse perseverance to eventually succeed? Well, I believe at the end of the day, it was that those storytellers, those storytellers had the same thing going on for themselves, and they shared something with the protagonists in those films. That they were all people who want to be heard amidst personal costs and public doubt in an environment of fear. Something each of us have felt in one way or another at some time. Every one of us in this room has at one time or another experienced something where we've struggled to communicate, to connect, to listen, and to be heard. Where fear has created a fog over our ears, eyes, and minds. Preventing us from truly listening, empathizing, and communicating. As an actor, you hear people talk about trying to find a way to connect to their character. For me, that means what can I do personally to relate to a character that isn't like me? whether that character is fictional or real. Now, I've played characters where it seems like 80% of their life pursuits are different than mine. But at the core, you can find commonality. You can find a simple thing to hook onto. Things like, what does it mean to me to be a man, to be an adult, to provide for your family, to get a job, to crave and receive acknowledgement from your work, to be alone, to be in love. And it is that commonality that an actor feels with his character that hopefully creates enough empathy for the movie watcher. So the movie watcher can see themselves in that character's journey. You may have never dreamt about being a boxer, but we all love Rocky because we all dream about rising above to be something. We all dream. We all hope. My point being simply that empathy is transcendent. The communication by way of finding similarities in our differences forces us all to pay a little more attention, allowing us to see how we fit into a situation that might not otherwise be relatable. So now let me take the prism that I look through at my industry and shine it towards yours. I have a ridiculous amount of respect for the real work that you all are doing, not just in terms of patient safety, but the everyday accomplishments you have in your given professions as doctors, healthcare workers, politicians, hospital executives. So much so that as I have watched this organization grow, I've struggled to understand why some of the larger media world does not pick up on the importance and implications of patient safety. I honestly find it embarrassing. I try in some small ways that I can to talk to folks in the media about these issues. I think we all see the awareness growing, but it is yet to hit the lexicon in a way that's clearly warranted by the 200,000 plus preventable deaths that occur in hospitals every year. I also watch as many of you willing participants truly struggle with changing the paradigm within the industry itself. So this brings me back to a central question. How can we hear each other? How can we truly hear each other in an empathetic way that comprehensively deepens our level of communication. Deepens it to a point where it creates transcendent behavior. You see, to me, beyond all of the important data and studies that will be shared here this weekend, to me, that is the point of this conference. In thinking about this, it occurred to me that the macro mission and need to communicate this movement's objective to the media and world at large is actually built on this movement's micro need for healthcare workers within the industry to communicate with each other. But sometimes our different perspectives do get in the way. When we talk about building a culture of safety, what we're really talking about is listening and being heard in a way that the fear from other elements does not intervene, drawing that foggy cloud around our eyes, ears, and minds. An environment needs to be created that allows for people to not just speak, but to be heard, to truly communicate. To communicate in a way that allows for a level of empathy so that we force ourselves to see where a person from the other side of that hospital bed is coming from. Because no matter how much of an authority the doctor is in a blood test, the nurse has a very consistent and perhaps different perspective 
based on that patient's daily behavior. And if given a chance to be heard, that nurse's perspective might inform the decision that the doctor will make in step with the interpretation of those tests. And by the way, the same goes for the patient, who not only needs to be heard, but whose involvement needs to be cultivated and encouraged. In fact, it's kind of ironic that very often the people in charge of making these decisions, using their rarefied skill set and unique ability to interpret information, are not always the best suited to allow a bridge of information and communication during a time of anxiety and fear. Therefore, actually blocking themselves from getting all of the real information needed to make the decision that they were actually tasked with. Now, the same can be said for the players in my industry. When creating a scene, an actor depicts a moment through words and emotions. The cinematographer has a very different perspective, capturing that same moment with a camera veering via various angles and lighting. Now, the director must build a bridge. So those two and often different perspectives can be utilized in concert. Now, while it's the director's job to decide what is useful about these different perspectives and what is not, if the director does not create an environment of true communication, the director prevents himself or herself from gaining all of the information possible and therefore has less of a chance of being successful in creating a nice scene. To me, this is less important, but the same as the players around a hospital bed. While the doctor makes the ultimate decisions, all perspectives are necessary. In fact, it's different perspectives that actually keep us in check so that together the game is raised. And in the world of patient safety and healthcare, that means raised to a place beyond unfortunate outcomes. Again, that is what I believe that this conference is here for. To give everyone a chance to take your different perspectives and skill sets and figure out how to hear each other on a deeper level so that a culture of empathetic communication can take hold. Take hold over the next couple of days and stay held so you can transport it back to the various hospitals, businesses, and political offices that you all work in. Now, as a storyteller, we use trickery to drown out the rest of the world so that you are emotionally directed to paying attention to what we want you to, so that you can hopefully have the experience that we want you to, so that hopefully our message will transport beyond the theater and stay with you to make a small, lasting impression in your life. Your job is much trickier. There's no underscoring of music, no close-ups. The light does not dim down so the rest of the world fades away and allows you to get everyone to focus on that very important moment. You have to rely on each other's will. A will to create a true culture of communication around a hospital bed that can foster a maximum level of success and a minimum level of accidents. Now, when it comes to the world of the traditional media, it is a bit more obtuse, and we need to go down a road of trial and error. None of us can pretend to have the answer, but it is the same principle of attack, I believe. We can't just share data about what is working and what is not and expect that the world will just pay attention. This is a complicated and scary stuff for most people, and you're going to have to acknowledge the potential cynicism in which the media at large looks at the medical industry to begin with. It's something that both over this conference and moving forward, we all need to continually examine to see how we can get the rest of the world to see themselves in this story. We need to figure out how to communicate the importance of this message to the more popular media so that places like the Today Show and CNN will find this subject just as important to talk about as Khloe Kardashian's love life. At the end of the day, as we come up with our solutions, unearth our unfortunate instances, and write our story of success. We need to think of the many different ways we can ingratiate the community and communicate our needs to the world at large. We need to see and let them see where they fit in this story. We need to fight their cynicism with the example of practicing and finding commonality and openly communicate with each other. It's my belief that embracing this practice of the solving of problems by way of trying to truly hear each other, the rest of the world will perk up and listen to what we are all trying to accomplish. Thank you very much.